Hello everyone, my name is Philip Oliveira and welcome to another video. This time, first things first, some coffee. I will need it uh, during the, the maintenance. Um, this is quite good just to drink some coffee while we wait for a water change or something like that. So for this tank, this 60 centimeters tank, I must say that I neglect it a little bit just to have something to show you how I usually take care of my maintenance and um, how I trim it and also I uh, change the water, clean the filter and everything so I will show to you all of this in this video. So first thing to do, I will show to you the tools that I'm going to use. We need some towel just to clean the hands. Then we have a net, a normal window or glass scrapper and also some tools just to clean the, the glass from inside. Also some pair of scissors and then uh, a clamp, a hose and then the styrofoam box where I'm going to uh, put the, the pipe from the filter with a little bit of bleach just to make it clean. So I will try to make this video quite short and explain all the steps, even clean, trim a little bit the, the plants because the, the tank is not so clean at all. Uh, I had uh, some algae inside, they are already almost um, leaving, they are gone. But still have a few uh, algae and uh, this problem was caused by not having too much flow on the tank. The plants are too, too, uh, too uh, overgrowth and then uh, my cool is a shuna decide to breathe so one of the reasons I even touched not even did a water change for about two weeks and a half. So I will show you all the steps now and how to do it. So here it is, the new rock star of the family here. I put it in another room, but she already figured out how to get out of, of that. So here he is. It's a, a she, is a dog, and is always looking for attention. Uh, so how you get out? <laughs> so go, 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 go. Let me record this video. Let me show you how the tank looks like before doing any maintenance. So you see the glass are a little bit dirty, even the pipe. So I neglected, uh, I must say, uh, more or less in purpose just to have something to show you and even how we're going to trim all those plants. You see they are already touching the surface. Kuliza Shuna, they have some bubbles there. Uh, let me try to zoom it. They are placed there. So, But I still need to trim those plants for sure. They will get another spot just to do it. I also need to trim some uh, Igrophila pinatifida. This is the algae that I was talking about, but since I have did a treatment with the Flourish Excel, so they are already dying and uh, they will be living soon, so I'm not that concerned. Um, about uh, the other plants, okay, I need to make some space in the front. As you can see, these are already touching the front glass, so I need to improve the water circulation in this tank, and this is one of the reasons that uh, I let it uh, be complete lower growth so I have something to show you guys how I do it and make it uh, more easy as possible so this is all the tools the first thing that I usually do is just to stop the small skimmer that I have here this one I will stop the skimmer then uh, I need to find which one is the filter I guess this is this one so I can just turn it off this and switch the filter because I need to get the pipe out. Okay, the filter is already done. So I will take, you see that it's completely dirty. So I want to take and save some time doing the maintenance just to take that pipe out, put it in a styrofoam box and then properly clean it with some bleach. So more or less the same process as, as we have with the crystal lily pipes. So I use a styrofoam box and what I usually do is just place some uh, hot water. Um, I, I will need to do hands, so I will just uh, stop the video for one minute and then I need to detach this piece just for the, the both parts laid down on the bottom of the styrofoam box. So now you see the pipes are detached from each other. So now I'm just warming up some water. I use hot water for this process because 
uh, it takes less time to clean the pipes than usually uh, it happens with uh, just cold water because cold water even to take everything from inside um, I think the, the hot water will dissolve it faster uh, before we take with the bleach so though it's just normal hot water I'm not um, taking any fire on it just uh, getting from the tap water and then get some hot water inside add some uh, caps of bleach and this will stay while I'm doing the maintenance to um, to this tank. Uh, this is uh, the first thing I do because uh, in that way, when I finish, I can always um, just put it in place and uh, the job is done. Now that we have uh, the hot water inside, I will just pour some uh, bleach, not that much, just a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the water is hot, but it's not hot enough that I uh, can burn my, my fingers. So I will leave this in this place just to um, clean all the tubes and then come back to the maintenance. But before, don't forget to wash your hands because I touch it on the bleach. I don't want it that uncontaminated and having problems inside of the tank. Okay, my hands are washed. So now I need to take a little bit of the water. What I usually do, I use... Uh, the hose just placed inside using a clamp just to hold the hose in place. This is a plastic clamp so there is no problem because it will not scratch the glass. And then take the other part and put it directly on the sink. Vacuum it and then take a little bit of the water just to avoid the water to splash and get out of the tank. Just enough, more or less three fingers in order that I can just clean inside, don't splash, don't put the water outside and uh, we'll make this process easier. So let me put the lid, otherwise I will just forget what it is. I think it's already enough. I will take it off. So now I will take the cleaning tools, these two. I'll take these cleaning tools to start to clean the front glass and the side glass. As you see that is already detaching and uh, taking all the green algae from the, the, the front glass. It's a very easy process. Um, I use uh, some uh, coal, I think, for cleaning dishes. I just glue it because uh, this tool has around or probably more than 12 years that I am using it. It's not all that get wasted, so we need to replace it. So this is the normal process, as you can see, that is not a big deal. Uh, if you can do this every week or every three, four days, uh, your glass will be completely clean. Uh, I don't need to scrap it that much. But yes, as you see, that's almost in the front of the glass, it's already clear. But I need to get access to that side. I must say that this tank is not placed in the best position of the house, but it's uh, one of the space that was empty and uh, my wife uh, likes to have a tank and uh, even take care of the, the fish, they call them the babies and uh, it's, it's quite nice while we are in the kitchen even we have some meal and drinking some coffee we have a, a tank just to look out uh, this is one of the sides so what I'm going to do is just move the hang on filter for another position so I can get access to this side this tank was uh, originally, or in the very beginning, it was placed on the living room. Uh, I would say that this tank was uh, uh, used for making some experiments with the fertilization. Um, and uh, as around 12 months since I escaped it or escaped it. So I just moved it from uh, the living room to here. I didn't dismount it. I just drained the water, leaving a little bit of the water. And I carry and place it here. Uh, I have used a styrofoam uh, plate on the bottom of the tank just to make it secure just because this is granite and in touch glass with uh, granite probably is not the wise decision just to make. The, the bottom glass can break and uh, in this way uh, I must say that it's safe, even help you to level the, the tank. So I'm using now the scrapper because uh, the side glass is a little bit more dirty than the front. And it's also very good just to reach the bottom, so we can uh, just clean the glass completely. 
as you see there are so many tools similar to this one but I, I prefer to use this one because it's, uh, the stick is very resistant and um, I have been at this for about 13 uh, months uh, for 13 years more or less the same tools I'm not sure if you can buy it now because probably this is from Rena it was I think a French company but it's still bankrupt or at least I don't see any products from them uh, maybe they are bought for another company not sure so this is what I usually normal process to do in the tank so let's move the filter to the front now to get access to the other side but now for that position and si since the stick is not uh, is really tall so what I'm going to do is detach the scrapper directly from the base of the the, the stick I'm going with my hands and do it the job directly there it's much easier it's precise won't cause any other problems as you can see make the job easier the tank will be clean very very fast and I prefer to clean the glass before doing the water change so any all those particles can get out directly on the tap water when I change the water and then have uh, would say all the particles uh, from the trimmings also out uh, we make the process and the tank and the end result much easier so I think it will be better also to take the CO2 from here okay with pressure let's take the CO2 diffuser from Aquario I will put just there just try to clean this side to make it easier and then I just place it again let's get this one oh I already put some water outside it was expected it's always the same problem I'm trying to make it as fast as possible but it's always like that so it is clean just put it again on place get the hose connect it again with the stopper And don't forget where is the towel yeah clean the mess before your wife can notice that you did something so this is okay now the CO2 is connected so I think she will not notice unless she saw the video so this is the problem but it will be okay it's already cleaned let me clean all the glass so now the CO2, the, the CO2 diffuser needs to get some pressure and then if after it gets some pressure we'll release the bubbles. So let's take a look how the tank looks from our, uh, right now after I clean uh, the glass. As you guys can see it is already much better. It doesn't look the same tank anymore. So everything is clean. I will take also the um, this the skimmer uh, I will take it off uh, just to get a clean uh, outside in case there's some uh, small algae and also I will just take all the rock wool from inside of the the, the ungone filter and start to trim all those plants so let's take this out for general cleaning take it maybe pull the cord it will be more than enough okay I have it here get the towel don't make a mess okay now put it in the sink then I will clean it later so right now I will lift the, the filter I will just start to trim all these plants and then I will do a final cleaning afterwards so now I can see clearly what I'm going to do so let me get this small spring scissor uh, I just need to clip some of the pinatifida because the pinatifida is growing really really tall some of the ferns just release some space on the front uh, the ferns unfortunately they will not float so we need to take it immediately from the tank I need to get some space here on the front otherwise plants uh, or the flow will be very poor and then uh, afterwards uh, we'll get some algae because the water circulation is not the best 
So this is the reason that we need to take some of those plants out. Usually even if to do this job, I prefer to use my hands, go there close to the part that is uh, in the inner part of the, the, the scape or close to the wood and detach it with my fingers. Uh, it does the job quite well and we can be very very precise uh, instead of uh, taking uh, probably the wrong uh, leaf. So the wrong leaf. So I just using my nail to take the excess or the, 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 the volume that I don't want. As you can see, you can take it very easily. I will get some plastic things just to put it on a bag where I can put all these plants. Otherwise, it will start leaking. Uh, just one minute. Oh, okay, I can use this. So I can just take the plants and put it inside. Some of them I can reuse. The microsorums I can't because microsorums they have a rhizome. I am just detaching the, 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 the leaves and clipping it. But the pinetifida I can always reuse because I want. So let's take some of the strident, get some space in the front just for the fish to, to swim and also to have a proper water circulation inside of the tank. This is uh, very easy. So you just need to find the ones you want to clip. Even if you see some algae on it and uh, you don't want it uh, or do any treatment with Flourish XL, you can always uh, just clip the, 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 the leaves that they are more affected. So I just want to clip the big ones. I want just the small ones in the front of the tank so uh, we can leave just some space for the, the fish to swim. Just take like this. Just move the camera a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I am doing. Okay, let's try to don't make a mess. So what I'm doing just clip, as you see, the long ones. You can use your fingers or just take the tip of the scissor and clip it like this. It's here also the old ones. This is the first that they will get algae case of some unbalance. The coliza. This is the, the female, as you can see, is uh, trying to breed. Uh, they already put some, uh, this not hags, but it's uh, kind of bubbles in the corner of the tank because there is no water movement. And the guys are quite decided for at least three weeks in a row, they are trying to breed, uh, but I don't think they will be succeed. They are quite young yet, so they have still a lot of time. So maybe this one is better, just to clip all the pinatifida. Don't be afraid to trim it because uh, this even being used as a rhizome plant, uh, it can also be used as a normal uh, stem plant. You can trim whatever you want or the size you want and then all the new uh, runners or new plants will grow smaller. So it will be quite interesting even to see the color of it when they are quite close to the water surface because they will become reddish uh, or orange tone. So it's quite nice to get some contrast and make it really, really short. So if you have pinatifida and it's growing really, really tall, you can always uh, give a trim and they the next uh, stems or the say so yes the next times or even runners they will grow shorter i also need some light just to get in uh, on this area otherwise it will be too dark and uh, foreground carpet that is the country monte carlo will have some difficulties just to to grow because you see that is a little bit different from the area where it's with the full of light and less light it grows a little bit bigger so let me just clip those runners. Otherwise in one, two weeks will be full cover again. Now what I need to do, I just need to, I want to vacuum a little bit the, the foreground. Uh, there is some uh, snails there, but it's only shells. 
uh, the puffer already took care of them but uh, didn't uh, took all the snail so I have a few on the front so I need to be very very careful don't vacuum the, the shrimps too so what I'm going to do just place a net as you can see on the edge of the other hose then uh, now that I'm going to do the water change and also drain a little bit the water I will try just to vacuum in case some uh, shrimp is uh, vacuum in the hose I will get it directly on the net so there we go for this job I need to take this tip out I will use my fingers just to block and then just move slowly the hose directly here and don't try to get any shrimp just vacuum the snails if there is some plants that you want to take it off like some Risia or some moss I always use this process just to take them out and they will be vacuumed directly you see quite easy with the fingers just move all the shrimps from there I'm getting close just to vacuum this there's a lot of shells it's very weird Puffer should take them all. No, maybe they suck what is inside and leave the shells. It's really, really weird. And he left all the shells, as you see here. Should be a very a feast for the guy. Took a lot of food, but is very uh, selective. Only take what is inside and never what is uh, the, the entire snail. But I'm pretty sure it takes um, some small shrimps because um, somehow it controls the, the quantity of neocaridinas inside of this tank. Otherwise it will be too much. Uh, I'm pretty sure too that the small dwarf puramis will take the, the very uh, small shrimps too. But as you can see there is a lot of uh, shrimps inside. I need to be very very careful just don't suck them directly with the hose but try to get the much I can directly here already that wrist here that I don't want but leave that part on the back I think looks really really nice usually I do a water change of 30 40 percent sometimes I do 50 by plus 50 it depends of the kind of maintenance I need to do this time I will not trim the foreground I still think that is uh, quite nice it's not with too much volume with the risk of float it's still very stuck on the bottom so next time I will do a nice trimming to it so move guys let me vacuum a little bit more of the snails I really don't get it I thought the puffer would take all this the snail but I think not because all of them are here on this side and uh, it seems that it sucked what was inside very very weird or at least I don't find any reason for this the tank is still very balanced or at least for about say 12 mounts so that is not a nitrogen problem otherwise if there was some nitrogen or ammonic problem should be all the shrimps dead too so only the snails there so maybe something that uh, this small puffer does is probably very very selective so now I just uh, clean the part that I wanted just uh, something that is maybe blocked the exit maybe it will be the net just move a little bit from there okay yeah it's better now maybe the, the net was just touching I just want to take a little bit more of the moss even here to trim a little bit this moss I just pull it out as you see uh, I think it looks even more natural when we do that than uh, just trim it so you just take the access out and vacuum it take a little bit more from the side I just want to keep the Ricardia a little bit of moss is nice but not that too much so just take all the access 
maybe I will do some rescape to this tank soon. Uh, I just want to see how the tank develops. Uh, even the uh, last one I did in my 60 centimeters tank, this one, I kept for about 16 months. So this is already 12. So maybe a few months more and then I will do some rescape to it. Okay, now that we have around 40% of the water change or the volume, I think I can just flood it again. The tank is already cleaned. Maybe I can just take the time just to clean a little bit more the, the sides of the tank, but it's still nice. Let me put this uh, tool, because when I flood it, it will even disperse the water a little bit. Instead of having a stream, will disperse the water around the tank. Don't forget to put the clamp, otherwise if you touch the woods for some reason, it will flood the floor. Now, just to finish and start to flood the tank, I have this tool. I got it uh, in the garden center. Uh, we can apply the tool directly to the, the, your uh, tap water. So I just twist it, it gets old here. And then I just need to clamp the hose and then it goes directly to the tank. So it's that time when I should drink the coffee, relax and see the tank to flood. And this is it. So I just add the water very, very slowly. Maybe it's that too much. Uh, there is no eater on this tank. I will make it slower. There is no eater in this tank and uh, also um, the water is uh, at uh, ambient temperature. I'm not, uh, it's a cold water. And so far I never had a problem with ichium uh, in this tank. Even the fish as you have seen, they start to breed. Uh, I keep my tanks uh, 12 months a year with no eating, eating system in the tank just placed a little bit far away from the windows in the area where the tank is uh, keeping the more or less the same temperature during the 24 hours a day. So now it's going to flood. Uh, slowly I will just take care of the filter. Uh, I just need to take that uh, wool outside, then clean the pipe, wash it, and then place the filter again. Uh, taking um, top view of the tank as you can see all the resia and all the trimming process that I did to the pinetifida even on the bottom uh, sorry on the background all the hotala green out was trimmed so uh, it's not the first time I do those that, that trimming so I know more or less uh, the position that I need to put the scissors just to trim it and I did it at first so this is uh, how it looks like from the top so now it's flooding the tank very, very, very slowly. Uh, then it's time just to take the coffee, as you see, and then wait. Don't leave the tank or do other things while you are flooding the tank. So I did it for a, a few times and uh, I must say the end result was not that nice to see. So we have flood and water everywhere and my wife just uh, messing around in my head. So it's not that nice. So just pay attention to what, you, what you're doing and let the tank just flood completely and then you take care of the other things. This is what I, I usually do uh, now, not before. So uh, I, then I will take care of the, the, um, the hose from the filter. I just need to take that wool out. I will not clean anything else. That is only a sponge inside, but it still be okay. Uh, maybe I just take this basket off, as you see here. The water is still clear, there is not too much waste on it, so maybe I just replace this rock wool and it's done. Um, then the skimmer must, must be cleaned, we have it here, sorry that the cable is just to clean a little bit inside, there is some, uh, some plants on it. I still clean outside, don't need to uh, big be wash on it, just, just, just fine. So maintenance is already almost done so just clean those things put everything on place and I will show to you in a minute um, all that process 
Okay, so it is a time I already took the, the basket out. I just put this in here. As you see, this is the basket that is inside of the filter. Uh, the sponge is quite nice, I will not even touch it. I just replace this wool by a new one and put this inside of the filter again. So let me get the tubes so you can see it how they look like. Here it is. They are clean but I still uh, want to use some tools just to clean a little bit inside just to take some residual of the algae. We have here some kind of brush so this is what I usually do just to clean it a little bit will look much much better from one side and the other and now I will take the time just to oh I need to release a little bit the hose coming on the top it's not flooding right now but I need to take the hose out just the water don't get out okay then I will finish flood it so let's take this piece out the water that is here is only the one that is on the hose so this go to the filter and then I need to wash it this one quite well I don't use any other products anti chloramine or anti chloride nothing just wash it quite well by tap water I also use the tap water because the water here is really really good um, there is a little bit of chloride but not that big so we, if we want we just can drink it it's really really good water the arnets is around three degrees of th and uh, general arnets three degrees is a very soft water uh, so this is the one i use to do the water change in my tanks uh, and also there is always minerals on it i don't need to use trace elements on my um, weekly fertilization routine I only dose potassium, uh, also iron every two weeks and macros every two weeks. Not in the same week I use uh, iron. So everything is on place, it's already clean. So I will put the filter in, put the basket, put the pipe. Also now that I'm here with my hands so I just can pull it out this, give a nice wash just to take the plants that were on the skimmer, on the press filter of the skimmer, also there is something here that, that is a sponge, so let me take this and wash it too, so I can place everything on the tank and show it to, to you guys how the tank looks right now. It still needs probably 5 centimeters to flood, it's not 100% yet, so I'll just put this on place. This is not an ADA skimmer, this is from uh, Dice, I think it's a copycat of ADA. Uh, to be honest, it's, uh, it does the job quite well in the small tanks. Uh, I had this one first on my tw uh, 240 liters, my 19 centimeter scape, but it's not that strong enough, so I had to put the iron there, because the, um, it was just getting um, too much um, film on the water surface. But this one is quite nice for small tanks. Okay, so let's give me just a little bit clean on the side, just to make it perfect. Okay, you are ready to go. So let's move the camera to the tank and then I will show to you. I just need to clean a little bit the spot where the skimmer was. Okay, as you see, there is the hose. We'll just move it a little bit. So I need to place the basket on the filter, here, there it goes, because this filter was already cleaned, I guess, probably in the last maintenance, so I just be sure that I replace the wool so it leaves the water uh, really, really clean. I don't have any biological material in this filter, it's a very small one. I'm always uh, using the biological that is already on the soil on the, and then I should be okay. 
usually when we care too much is when the things get really really wrong so let's place the tube now okay so let's move this a little bit here I still need to clean just to be precise where the skimmer was okay and it's done so now I just need to flood the tank put the skimmer here we go get the skimmer put it on place okay skimmer on place now connect the tool again to flood the tank and also get the woods just to flood it a little bit there because we will need it there is a lot of air so I need to flood that small container otherwise the filter will not start okay place it again I will start the filter Okay, there is a lot of air inside, but we'll start working very, very soon. All the air is already gone. Okay. So the skimmer, I need to move the cable from the back. I'm making a mess. Sorry guys. Oops. Water. Okay. So I can pull the cord from that side. That should be okay. Here it is. So I can just plug it. It's still here just to connect. Okay. Now I just need to get a net. Get the suspended plants. Take them. And as you can see, the water surface is already moving a little bit better. So that will also keep the CO2 a little bit under, um, not releasing immediately to the water surface. The CO2 concentration will be higher. Um, it will be enough just to get rid of those algae. But they are already almost leaving because the algae already changed the color from black to purple uh, and should be just okay. So. Let me let the net here. Okay, water is on the level. Take the hose out. Just to get all those small particles or just turn on the skimmer and all those plants will get in. And this is done. So guys, no water conditioner, nothing. This is how the tanks look like. Let me show you how the tank looks like. So this is how it looks from the front. All the trimming part, filter is already working. I just need to put the lid. So just take it, the lid of the filter. Or circulation you can see already from the CO2 CO2 is already dispersing in the all the front of the tank you can see all the clues of Shuna look the color of them they look really really nice they are already dancing each other so probably they will just get another spot just to breed look so the water flow now was improved all the algae will be gone not that I am that concerned about them, but uh, as you can see, the tank is quite, quite clean. This is a regular maintenance, guys. Just nothing so special, no special care. And this is how the tanks look like. And this is it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this small uh, demonstration, uh, how I usually keep my tanks at home. Uh, I don't make the things so difficult, I try to make it easier. Probably for some of you there is a lot of mistakes, 
but I must say that it's working for me for so many, many years. And uh, I never had problems with fish, with plants. Uh, the tanks are really, really balanced. Um, the fish are really, really happy. If you want, I can just uh, do another video quite soon, just to show how the plants have developed and also how the fish look like. So, if you guys have enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Don't forget also to press that notification bell uh, because um, quite soon I will be in Budapest, in Hungary and for the 10th anniversary of the Green Aqua and uh, I intend to do some videos there and just keep you guys updated. In May I will be also in Milan uh, for a workshop at um, Aquarium Mediterranean and uh, I will be really really nice to see you guys there. So if you are really interested to come to um, Aquarium Mediterranean you need to book the spot because there is only a few seats left. So guys take care, bye bye and see you soon. Thank you.